In today's recording, we're going to talk about the process of erythropoiesis. And erythropoiesis, as we'll see, is the production of red blood cells. Now, if you watch the previous recording about hemoglobin, what we know is that red blood cells are enucleated. And that term enucleated means without a nucleus. Now, the importance of not having a nucleus is that means cells cannot divide. So what happens in our body, since these red blood cells can't divide, whenever they become damaged or if we need more of them, the body has to produce red blood cells. Okay, They can't just divide on their own. The body physically has to make these cells. Now, what we call that process of producing red blood cells is erythropoiesis, and we'll see that term on the next slide. Now, real quickly, the first bullet point here is talking about this idea of homeostasis. And remember, this is coming from chapter one, you saw it in AP one, but the idea of homeostasis, it is the ability of an organism to maintain a stable internal environment, okay? And basically what that means is that for every factor or variable that affects the body, the body has a particular range where it would like to be. So for like pH, the body uh, wants pH to be between 7.35 and 7.45. And as long as we're in this range, our body is healthy, our body is happy. That is true here for red blood cells as well. We have a particular range for the number of red blood cells, and as long as the body is in that range, life is good. However, if the body goes outside of the range, then we need to respond to that, okay? How we regulate this is through negative feedback, okay? Again, this is coming from chapter one, very, very important idea, it's a fundamental idea, negative feedback is. What is negative feedback? Basically speaking, it's a return to homeostasis. That's the easy way to think about it. So whenever a stimulus or a change comes along, our body returns uh, returns the variable back to its uh, excuse me back to its original point. Okay. Now, one of the main things we're going to see here uh, is that there is a major hormone involved with this process, and that hormone is called erythropoietin. EPO. You may have heard of EPO before because this is what is used by athletes, professional athletes, uh, Olympians, to give themselves an unfair advantage. If you've ever heard of the term blood doping, that is individuals that use EPO to give them more red blood cells. Uh, and the benefit of red blood cells, the more red blood cells you have, the more oxygen you have, and that is beneficial. Okay, a couple notes here about EPO. Again, it is a hormone, and by definition, hormones are released into the bloodstream. And a quick note here, where we produce, where the body produces this hormone, two locations, generally speaking, the kidneys and the liver. Okay, so let's look at a diagram uh, real quick. Okay, so real quickly, here is the words for what we're going to look at. So if you wanna come back and look at this, you can, but let me show you the picture from our textbook here. Now, real quickly, what you'll notice here is what initiates this whole pathway, okay? And again, this is called erythropoiesis. Write it here. You know what, I'm not gonna write it. <laughs> this is just not the best mouse to be able to write on. But anyway, let's look at this here. So what starts this whole process is low blood oxygen concentrations. And there is a particular term for low blood oxygen concentration, and that term is called hypoxia. And again, that is the definition of hypoxia, low blood oxygen concentrations. All right, and again, you can see hypoxia anywhere. Anywhere you have low blood concentrations, that is a term that we call hypoxia. But one cause of hypoxia is anemia, a lack of red blood cells, and this is an important idea to think about. 
Remember, the function of erythrocytes, of red blood cells, is to transport oxygen. Well, if you don't have red blood cells, you're not able to transport oxygen, and that causes concentrations of oxygen to decrease, okay? Again, let me say that one more time. The function of red blood cells is to transport oxygen. And so if you lack red blood cells, like we see in types of anemia, then your oxygen levels are going to decrease. And hopefully that makes sense if you think through that. All right, so what happens then is we have low blood oxygen. And what we have are chemoreceptors. Now remember the definition of a chemoreceptor. They are receptors that identify changes in chemical concentration. And in this case, the chemical concentration that we're looking at is oxygen. Okay, so we're focusing on oxygen. Now, when we have a state of hypoxia, these chemoreceptors stimulate our liver and kidneys to produce the hormone erythropoietin. As we mentioned before, erythropoietin is released into the bloodstream. And then what happens is it stimulates red bone marrow. Okay, and I'm going to put the plus up here. Hopefully you see where the plus is starting here. Let me scroll down just a touch. So we can see a little bit more of this image here. Okay, uh, again, this image is from your textbook. So if you want to follow along in chapter 14, you can find this image. But here we are. Liver and kidneys produce erythropoietin, and it stimulates red bone marrow here to produce more red blood cells, okay? Or again, more erythrocytes. The importance of this is more erythrocytes. Look what that causes. Boom. By having more red blood cells, by having more red blood cells, we increase oxygen carrying capacity, aka increased oxygen carrying capacity leads to an increase in oxygen concentration. Okay, so you can read that as an increase in O2 levels. Uh, and again, brackets, brackets here and here means concentration. So by having increased oxygen carrying capacity, we have an increase in oxygen concentration. Okay. And again, what causes that increase? More red blood cells. Okay. So again, let me summarize this. We have a state of hypoxia. There is a drop in oxygen concentrations. Uh, again, we can't see it, but up here. That drop is, is going to stimulate chemoreceptors to, uh, the drop in oxygen that is, stimulates chemoreceptors at the liver and kidneys to produce the hormone erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is then going to be transported to red bone marrow where it stimulates red bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. More red blood cells leads to an increase in oxygen carrying capacity which increases oxygen concentrations, okay? And again, guys, think about this. Why, why is this a big deal that we increase oxygen? Because the problem was we had low oxygen, right? We had hypoxia where we had low blood oxygen concentrations. So what do we need to do? We need to raise those concentrations to get us back to our normal value. And that is what negative feedback is. You see how it has the minus here. Again, it shuts this off. Once we have our increase in oxygen, once we get back to our regular oxygen concentrations, now we can stop producing erythropoietin. It's not needed any longer. Okay, let me just switch back to the previous slide. And let me fix that here. So you can see the idea that we're looking at. Again, this just puts into words what we said. But again, this image is a great image showing the process of erythropoiesis, uh, the hormone erythropoietin, and the function of it.